Objective two, interpret the slope and the y-intercept of the least squares regression line. Interpretation of the slope. In algebra, we learn that the definition of slope is the rise over the run or the change in y over the change in x. Now, if a line has a slope two over three, then if x increases by three, y will increase by two. Or if the slope of a line is negative four, which is the same as negative four divided by positive one, then if x increases by positive one, y will increase, decrease, excuse me, decrease, meaning the negative value by four. Interpreting slope for least squares regression lines has a minor twist. Statistical models such as a least squares regression equation are probabilistic. This means that any predictions or interpretations made as a result of the model are based on uncertainty. Therefore, when we interpret the slope of a least squares regression equation, we do not want to imply that there is 100% certainty behind the interpretation. So for example, the slope of the least squares regression line from example three is 3.1661 yards per miles per hour. In algebra, we would determine, interpret the slope to mean if x increases by one mile per hour, then y will increase by 3.1661 yards. In statistics, this interpretation is close but not quite accurate because increasing the club head speed by one miles per hour does not guarantee that the distance the ball will travel will increase by 3.1661 yards. Instead, for the range of data for which we have observations of the explanatory variable, an increase in club head speed of one miles per hour will increase the distance by 3.1661 yards on average. Sometimes the ball will travel a shorter additional distance, sometimes a longer additional distance, but on average, this is the change in distance. So two interpretations of slope are acceptable. One, if the club head speed increases by one mile per hour, the distance the golf ball will travel increases by 3.1661 yards on average. Or, if a club head speed increases by one mile per hour, the expected distance the golf ball will travel increases by 3.1661 yards. Now, the interpretation of the y-intercept. The y-intercept of any line is the point where the graph intersects the vertical axis. In general, we interpret a y-intercept as being the value of the response variable when the value of the explanatory variable is zero. It is found by letting x equal zero in an equation and solving for y. To interpret the y-intercept, we must first ask two questions. Number one, is zero a reasonable value for the explanatory variable? And number two, does the, or do any observations near when x equals zero exist in the data set? Now, if the answer to either of those questions is no, then we do not interpret the y-intercept. In the regression equation of example three, a swing speed of zero miles per hour does not make sense so we do not interpret the y-intercept. Now, the second condition for interpreting the y-intercept is especially important because we should not use the regression model to make predictions outside of the scope of the model, meaning that we should not use the regression model to make predictions for values of the explanatory variable that are much larger or much smaller than those observed. This is a dangerous practice because we cannot be certain of the behavior of the data for which we have no observations. So for example, we should not use the line in example three to predict distance when club head speed is 140 miles per hour. The highest observed club head speed is 105 miles per hour, as you can see here. The linear relation between distance and club head speed might not continue. So that means as this line continues and we get a higher and higher speed, well, it may turn into a nonlinear situation. So therefore, we have to be careful in that situation. 
Now, predictions. When there is no linear relation, so if there's no linear relation at all, when the correlation coefficient indicates no linear relation between the explanatory and response variables, and the scatter diagram indicates no relation between the variables, then we use the mean value of the response variable as the predicted value. So that means y hat is equal to the mean of the y value. So this is very important to remember um, when you're doing your exercises because as soon as you know that it does not have a linear situation, meaning that if you look at the graph and the scatter plot gives you sort of uh, a no linear situation at all, then we use the mean value of the response variable as a predicted value.